Yeah, so I'm Luis Silvestre, I'm a professor at the University of Chicago. So the way I got into mathematics initially was when I was in high school and it was through math competitions, which is sort of like the theme today, right? So when I was in high school, I got, I started competing into math Olympiads. Initially it was a very random thing. Uh, the math Olympiads in Argentina are a very large event. Uh, almost every school in the country has some people, some kids that go to the math Olympiads and, and, and take part in it. Uh, so by some random event, uh, when I was 14 years old, I went to this competition in my school. And the way it works is if initially you have this competition at, the at, the, at your school, at the local level, and then you go, once you go progressing, you go stage by stage until you get to the national level and finally to the selection to the IMO. Right, so the IMO is the International Math Olympiad. We have here the Norwegian team. Uh, so I went to the IMO twice. Um, and that's how I got interested in mathematics. And math Olympiads um, were very important for me. I, I, I think I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. Uh, it's something that you learn to appreciate mathematics, you learn uh, problem solving skills. Uh, it's with, without even realizing, you learn a lot of uh, theory of mathematics as well. I mean, you, you by participating, by trying to to improve and you know and to and to have more chances in the competitions, you get to learn a lot of it. And something that is you know per perhaps arguably even more important is that you become part of a community. You uh, learn, uh, you you meet some other some other people your your same age who share your interest, and and that community is pushing you to to go along the flow and become better and improve. Right. So. I, th I sort of grew out of that community, the community of Math Olympias in Argentina. Um, then uh, one day, uh, I was told that there was going to be a talk for the uh, Math Olympia kids in Argentina coming out of high school. I was in my large, last year of high school, and I was invited to a talk very much like this, except much it was not nearly as fancy, right? <laughs> but, but it was very much like this. It was like all the kids coming from the Math Olympias in Argentina, and we were going to give a talk by some researcher from the United States. And I was told it is the Maradona of mathematics. That's the description I was given. I don't even, do you know who Maradona is, by the way, because there are very young people here. So, I mean, this was pre-Messi, it was Maradona, right? So I go there, and it was Luis Caffarelli giving this talk. Right? And that's the first time I met Luis Caffarelli, right? So I was sitting at the audience. Uh, what I remember from that talk, I, I, I mean, this was quite a few years ago. Um, what I remember from this talk is that what I learned is more or less the roadmap of becoming a mathematician. I remember that he explained that uh, I was going to this uh, university in my hometown, and I learned that it was, you know, he said that it was a good place to do, go to college, that it was fine, you know. But perhaps it was when I get to the PhD time, when I go to grad school, it may be a good idea to go overseas to do a PhD. That's what I learned from the, uh, what I got out of that, what I remember at least from that, from that day. Um, so when I went to, to college in my hometown in Argentina, in La Plata, uh, I remember going to college, it was fun times. Um, you know, coming out of Math Olympias, I was, uh, I was a little bit ahead of the game when I started college because I, you know, I had been going to the IMO twice, I had a lot of training during high school, right? So I was a little bit relaxed when I started college, which is not great uh, because uh, at some point you have to learn that no matter how talented you are or how easy math comes to you, you have to work hard if you want to succeed. That's something that eventually I had to learn. It took me a while. I'm not sure when I learned that. Um, but eventually I did. Uh, so when I finished college, I went to get a PhD at the uh, University of Texas at Austin, and Luis Cafale was my advisor, my PhD advisor. So I went to UT Austin because I, 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 liked, I wanted to work with Luis Cafarelli, and I, and I like the way he approaches mathematics. So I study partial differential equations. Uh, partial differential equation is this problems in which the unknown is a function, you're looking for a function, and the equation relates the different partial derivatives of this function. That's what the partial differential equation is. And the overwhelming majority of the partial differential equations and most practical applications are completely unsolvable. You're never gonna find a formula that says this is the answer. That never happens. So the problems are 
Basically, you want to say something about these functions, the function that solve the partial differential equations, that you're not going to compute, right? So you, don't com you never could come up with the formula, you never compute the solutions, but you don't want to know whether you can prove that the, there is an upper bound for the function, or you want to know whether these functions are nice and smooth, or if they develop some singularities, right? So those are the problems that you are trying to, to solve, right? And and it's usually when you want to, 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 to study these equations, you don't want to think that you have a formula, you want to do a lot of arithmetic manipulations and move symbols from one side to the other, right? Even though uh, when you write the proof, sometimes it works, like, uh, it looks like that. But that's not the way you want to think about it, right? Uh, you want to have an understanding, you want to have an understanding of what everything represents, right? Uh, something that uh, is clearly clear in the work by Luis Cafe is like, you want to have an, a, a geometrical understanding of what these partial differential equations represent, or maybe a physical understanding, something that drives your intuition, right? So that's important when, when you want to, to study especially partial differential equations, but it may be true in practically every subject of mathematics, except maybe, well, no. So um, the, when you study this, this, these problems, there's always some geometrical or some physical intuition that is driving uh, your ideas, that is what, what, what allows you to come up with the right way to, to, to do the proofs. And I think it's, it's, it's good to try to think about mathematics that way. Um, so I went to UT Austin and I got my PhD with Luis Caffarelli. Then I spent uh, three years at the Courant Institute, uh, in which is a place in New York. And uh, I am a professor at the University of Chicago now. Uh, so, what should I say? Um, so, I grew up uh, in high school and learned to enjoy thinking about all sorts of math riddles. That's what we were doing. And I still enjoy them, right, even today. Uh, the great thing about becoming a, a researcher in mathematics is that you sort of enjoy this kind of math games for throughout your career, right, which is a great thing, right? So, well, I guess that's the story, all right?